first of all, I'd like to put it out there that I'm not a parent, nor am I a medical professional, and the things that I'm about to say are based on research, extensive reading, and observations. I recently read a book called Tiger Tiger, a memoir by Margot Fergoso. In it, the author describes her experiences as a seven-year-old meeting a 51-year-old man. He eventually becomes her lover, and the relationship only ends 15 years later when he kills himself. All this happens right under the nose of the child's distant father and her depressed mother. Of course, they suspect something is amiss, but Margot convinces herself and her parents that the time spent with her abuser is innocent and the definition of joy. That happened years ago, thousands of kilometers away from here. And then, closer to home, there was the case of an 11-year-old girl in Singapore who was raped and sexually abused by a 47-year-old man for a period of one and a half years. I could go on. Children are being sexually assaulted and abused all over the world. Most often, in places you think they're the safest at and by people most familiar to them. A report late last year revealed that more than 22,000 children in Malaysia were sexually abused between the years 2010 and May 2017. I don't even have kids, and the thought of that makes me shudder. The fact that a child's safety can be at risk pretty much anywhere. As parents and caregivers, you can't exactly lock them up at home, but you can teach them how to better protect themselves from pedophiles. After combing through various articles written by experts in the field and from parents of sexually abused children, here are five steps you can take to make your child less vulnerable to sexual abuse. Teach them about body boundaries. Start early, explain the names of their body parts, and avoid using cutesy names to refer to them. It has been known to discourage perpetrators when children use correct anatomical terms. Once they know the names, tell them that their private parts are called private for a reason. No one should be allowed to touch it, unless they are unwell and at the doctors for a medical checkup under the supervision of their parents. They should understand the difference between safe touch and bad touch. A safe touch can be a comforting hug from a parent that in no way makes a child uncomfortable. An example of a bad touch can be uncomfortable caresses on a child's body, especially their private parts. Also, please remind your children that it is not okay for them to touch other people's private parts. Perpetrators often begin by asking children to touch their body and private parts. Kids need to know that that is not okay. Tell them that strangers are not allowed to take their photos. Oftentimes, children may not be aware of their surroundings, especially if they're outdoors or without parent supervision. So please let them know early on if they spot anyone taking photos of them, unless it's for class photos or at supervised group birthday parties, they should report it to their parents. Pedophiles trade photos of children online, and it is not only their private parts and nude photos that make the cut into their sick, sick world. Here's a gentle reminder to parents. Please, please be mindful before sharing photos of your children online. You never know what they could be used for. Explain sexual abuse to them. This is extremely important. In order for kids to understand and tell you that they're being abused or feel unsafe in an environment, they would first have to understand that what's happening is wrong. The next time news of sexual abuse is on TV, do not switch the channel. Instead, start a conversation about it. Ask them, do you know what is going on? Have you ever heard of incidents like this? And if they're older and you're aware that they know the gist of the issue, perhaps you can ask them what they would do if they were put in a similar situation. That will give you an idea on how much they know and how you can better educate them. Practice open communication. This isn't always easy, but you can start by always reminding them that they should never keep any secrets from you and that they would never ever get into trouble for telling you what's going on in their lives. This would hopefully make them feel like you are their safe space and that they can confide in you if things go wrong. Be present. Ask them how their day was. See if there are any changes to their mood and behaviour and know their whereabouts at all times. Lastly, let your child know that these rules apply to everyone, not just strangers. In just Sarawak alone, there were 3,272 cases of incest between the years 2006 and 2015. And that's just the ones that were reported. As real and important as it is to remind your child of the stranger danger, it is equally important to remind your child that even people they are familiar with and like, like say teachers, friends, relatives, are not allowed to cross these boundaries. I am fully aware that these steps and suggestions may not completely prevent sexual abuse, but it's always good to arm your children with this information so that they grow up knowing what to look out for. If you have anything to add, please drop a comment down below.